going to get pretty ugly, but in many ways it, it had to happen. It had to go this bad in order for people to see the power that they've got. So it's getting to the point where they have to stand up for themselves. And when they do, they find how powerful they are. So it, it's a good thing in many ways. You know, it's a, it's a very uncomfortable time. It's a very concerning time. But it's also a time of great opportunity. And I, I think it's important that people look at it that way. I was really trying to inspire people and empower people to stand up for themselves to prevent this train ever reaching the station. Mm. Now it's here. Like mm. I said, people don't really have a choice. They have to stand up for themselves. I mean, it's, it's been an, an interesting thing to see. Um, you know, there, there was a time where I, I saw a real um, sense of enlightenment happening and a, and a real possibility for the human race to rise as one and simply move us in a different direction. And like I said, now we're being we're being pushed into a corner where we don't have a choice. We have to do that. So, you know, it's been it's been very sobering seeing um, seeing what's unfolded in the last couple of years. I mean, I honestly didn't think people would be this asleep and and that yeah. this many people would fall for the narrative. I really thought it might be like fifty fifty, but it's like eighty percent of the people out there seem to be falling for this. So maybe that will cause them to, to stand up. I mean, we're we're at a, such a, a crossroads here at the moment. It's, it's really difficult to be able to analyze this situation. It's changing so rapidly. It's ridiculous. So I don't I don't know. I mean, I don't know what's going to take to wake people up. I don't know what it's going to take to get them to stand up and, and see what's going on here. But um, maybe this would do it. I've been saying non-compliance for years. This is what I was telling people way back in the beginning, that non-compliance is stop. I said back then, I'd like to see the whole world stay home for a day. Don't use any credit cards. Just turn everything off and just stay home for a day. It would send a shockwave around the world. You know, when you realize just how much this system controls you, if you disconnect from it, they'd freak out. There's nothing they could do. Now they've kind of flipped that on us and they're disconnecting us when we don't want to be, you know, mm. and making us all stay home and, and stay apart from each other and doing everything they can to disturb our health and, and interfere with our health psychologically, physically, mentally, everything, everything they can do to, to mess us up. I mean, I've tried to empower people the whole time, but it's getting to a point now where you've got to have a plan B. Well, you've got to be prepared to bug out and just, just hit the road if you need to. But through the whole thing, I mean, you've, you've got to be able to face infinity without flinching. This is something that I've, I've said for so many years. I mean, I have no stake in the outcome of this experience. I'm here to hopefully make the world a little bit better by my presence in it. I'm only here for a breath. It's it's such a short ride. I mean, I'm I'm 64 years old. I, I remember when I was a kid just the other day. So it's a really short ride. You can't really have a stake in the outcome of this and think that, well, I'm, I'm going to achieve this big thing and I, it's going to be this golden reality that I'm creating because you're going to be gone soon. That's mm -hmm. a given, you know. So it, it's we, we place too much emphasis on the physical. You know, I want a big front door. I want, I want a big house. I want to be able to buy beautiful jewellery for my wife. I want to be able to have all this pile of stuff so I can sit on top and say, look at me, I'm successful. But really, it's about this. It's about you. It's about finding out what your true purpose is and finding out how to express yourself in an unlimited capacity as human consciousness, you know. That's what you really come here to do. And I look at this whole thing as a soul test, you know. So, I mean, it's a, it's a way of, of getting rid of the spiritual baggage, a way of getting rid of the consciousness that doesn't work properly. But by the same token, we have so much invested in this this physicality and this this uh, this reality we've created for ourselves in our home or our car, or, or you've got to be prepared to let all that go. Put mm. on a backpack and just walk into the woods if, if need be, because I mean that's that's what we might have to do. But how many people can do that? How many people have still got the life skills to do that? So these are the sorts of things people need to start thinking about. You know what what do you need to do to survive? If the system was just to go away and disappear, and you were just dropped in the woods. Could you survive? So you need to sort of start looking at yourself as a human being. What does it mean to be human? And this is a great opportunity to rediscover yourself. It's a great opportunity to get rid of all the trappings of this, this fictional, pollutive, destructive society that we live in and just come back to what it means to be human. So you can look at it that way. What about being human? What about being human? So it, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for that. And you've been put into a position where you don't have a choice. I mean, I've got all this stuff that I do, but by the same token, I've got a tent, I've got a bow and arrow, I've got a backpack, I could easily pick it up and just walk into the woods if I have to. And I can survive, I can do some trapping, I can do some hunting, I can do some growing some food, I can pick some berries. There's a lot of edible stuff around. So if it comes to it, 
well, that's that's what you might have to do. You don't need to be brave. You just got to see the truth and speak the truth the way you you feel it, and have no stake in the outcome. I mean, what can they do? They might be able to hurt this vessel. What well, a second, it's going to martyr me, and everyone will want to know what I'm saying. But they can't hurt me because I'm pure consciousness. This is just this is just an experience I'm having. So, you know. I have no stake in any of it. I think um, we came here to express ourselves to the fullest of our potential. Everything this system is doing is attempting to take that away. So it's time we flip the tables. You know, the only reason we go along with it is out of fear. We think they actually have authority over us when they don't. They only have the authority that you allow them to have. So I just don't give them any. You know, it's an energetic universe, and it's it's a it's a world of mirroring, a mirroring emotion. If you, you can think of it as a pro- projection. You know, there's only really one of us here. You know, if you can think of the mind of God shattered into seven billion fragments. So it can experience itself. We can have a conversation. Mm. But it's a law of mirroring. When people are are, um, stressed out about stuff, the universe just gives them more of it. I mean, you're totally stressed out about money all the time. You're never going to have money. You're always going to be stressed because it's a mirror. It's a mirror. Um, you, know, you think of the, the heart as, as being a, a power source, a, a generator which, which generates an emotional energy which feeds your brain and your brain is a quantum instrument that, that creates a projection and will turn possibility into actuality depending on the emotional input it receives from the heart. So when you're stressed about stuff and you think, oh, no, the cops are going to pull me over, the cops are going to yeah, – of course they are because you're pulling it in, you're drawing it in. I just don't think about that stuff. It doesn't, it's not part of my reality. And I don't have any fear of the police pulling me over because they don't have any authority over me anyway. They might think they do, but they don't. And if it really comes down to it and they drag me off and they put me in a jail and they put me in a courtroom or whatever, whenever that's happened, I've ended up just walking out of there and saying hi to the judge and having a few words with him and just walked out. Because you're dealing with people. You're just dealing with people. They take you in there and you forget that you're a person. You forget you're a human being. You become this number, this name, and you get someone to speak for you and all this sort of shit. I'm just dealing with people. Wherever I go out there, I'm just dealing with other humans. And that's the way I look at them. And so I just don't call that in. you know. And, and that's just the way reality works. It's just the way the universe works. It's a law of mirroring. And if you, you live your your... Uh, follow the the one law of creation, which is unconditional love and service to creation. That's the way I live my life. And and I haven't had a bad day in probably 20 years since I've had a bad day because I just don't call that in. I don't have any attachment to the things that people – I mean, all the things that, that people think are problems and shit. I mean, that time 25 years ago when you were really upset that day, you think about it now. What does it mean? It didn't mean anything. It didn't mean anything back then either. You just thought it did. Mm. You know, this is the stuff with all this baggage that we hang on to. People, people live their lives in, in a state of anxiety and fear, usually over stuff that happened in the past, which doesn't exist now, or apprehension of stuff which may happen in the future, which doesn't exist now. So they're not in the now. They're not, they're, they're lost in their mind. You know, and they're lost in all of these possibilities and all these memories and all these possibilities, none of which exist now. So they're lost in their imagination. You know, they're lost in their mind. They're living their lives in fear of the non-existential. You know, and fear of the non-existential, well, we call that insanity. You know, so people live their lives according to different socially acceptable levels of insanity. And that is our society. And as soon as you see that, you can just step out of it, step onto a different path. Throw yourself to the wind. I've often said if you throw yourself to the wind, you can ride it. No stake in the outcome. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't have any plans. People say, how come you you went around the world? I went overseas in 2012 for two weeks. Ended up going right around the world. I was away for three and a half months. Went right around the world, got home again. And everyone said, how did you do that when you didn't plan it? And I said, well, that's the thing. I didn't plan it. If I had plans, I wouldn't have done most of the stuff that I'd done in my life because I would have had other plans. Mm. But, you know, you've just got to let yourself be open to the possibilities and just flow with it, and you end up in the most miraculous places, doing the most miraculous things. It's even when you start a project and you've got this vision of what it looks like at the end, let it – when you – when you start a project, it becomes a living thing. It becomes an organic life force. Let it form its own life. And then something might happen that you didn't even see. 
you couldn't even foresee where it was going to take you. And it took you to this incredible place and became this incredible thing that you didn't even know you were going to build or construct because you just left it open to do it itself. You know, and you didn't have a stake in the outcome of what it was going to be, this thing, you know. So that's the way I look at life. And I think if people look at that life, you find it just unfolds organically. And it's people's inability to do that and to let other people dictate what they can and cannot do and what is right and what is wrong and whether you're healthy or whether you're not, which has all led to this situation. You know, it's this, this lack of responsibility. People want freedom, but they don't want the responsibility that comes with being free. I want to be free. You tell me when I'm free and then you tell me it's safe to go outside and it's all good. That's not what freedom's about, you know, and, and that's that's just the weird mentality we've got. You know, people want freedom, but they don't know what that freedom is. So- they want to be free to have the choices that somebody else gave them, you know.